But it doesn't take away the fact that this is the king. How much more he that seated in heaven and make the earth what? He's supposed to. Ah! Hallelujah. You see, we will miss it so many times. This God we are talking about, he has everyone in his palm. Huh? Before you make a joyful noise unto him with psalms, come into his presence with thanksgiving before you make a joyful noise. Are you not seeing it? It's, 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 it's accordingly. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise. Didn't he say, just start shouting. Just go, oh Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here. You can't go to the presence of the king and just open your mouth and begin to say rubbish. First of all, who are you? You don't know, when you are giving thanks, your profile begins to be open. You know, sometimes when you go before the king, earthly king, you see, it will beckon on the attendance. Who is this? What has it come for? Maybe you already, of course, there must be, well, um, what, is, what is it called? A, a, a appointment. So you are coming for something, and they read what you're coming for. So it's the same when you go and you're giving thanks, and God is saying, he's seen your record. Who, who is this? Who is this? this? This this voice sounds familiar. Not the one the last time you gave thanks was last year. After one year, you are giving thanks. You see, is that kind of thanks that will be withstood by the Prince of Persia? I will explain to you. You know, the heaven is there. First, second, and third, he third heavens. At least from the scripture, we know that. Apostle Paul said, I knew a man that was caught into the third heavens. Now, he was speaking of himself. But he said the things he saw are not what he can utter with his mouth. So before your prayer was sent to that place, you must have broken barriers. Hallelujah. You must have done what? Broken barriers. So if it's not crossing the first heavens, Ah, oh boy. Why? Because you are not used to it. There are prayers that when you make, there are, there are, there are voices that when they hear in the heavenlies, they give way. Because this is a familiar voice. That's why you see a man of God say, before God, woman stand. You see, Elijah, Elijah came. Remember, in, 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 in verse 17, the prophet Elijah just came from nowhere. He said, before God whom I stand, he was talking to, 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 to King Ahab. He said, before God whom I stand, there will be no rain nor dew. Three and a half years. Hallelujah. You remember, he didn't say, thus said the Lord. If he said, thus said the Lord, meaning God told him to say that. But because he's in the presence of the Lord continually, he said, before whom I stand. Can you boldly say, before God whom I stand? Ah, you know your relationship. You know your relationship. So he said, yes, he made the declaration, and God said, for this declaration you've made, you've made, come, let me hide you. Because they will seek you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, that's why you have to know your backings before you make some dangerous declarations. Huh? You brag, 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 just like, then, then in Swiss you know, do you know why I am? Do you know who my father is? Do you know who my father is? God will not help you. It's that day that, that the heavens want to open up where your father is. And after school, your dad will come with bike to pick you. <laughs> no, well, I know some of you, did, some of you, you, you all went to very true school, right? Yeah, I see. I see it's a different generation. In those days, we, we used to stage fight. During school hours, somebody looked for your trouble. It's okay. You will see. <laughs> after class. And after class, we got up behind the school building. They will form a circle and draw a line. You cross, you cross, you cross. <laughs> and you fight, refight. Not the one you fight with mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's take another point. Hallelujah. And nothing will see that. 
Continue your prayer with thanksgiving. Colossians 4 verse 2. Continue your prayer with thanksgiving. Colossians 4 verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with what? Hallelujah. You see, I don't know if you're following the Bible verses we'll be reading, you see the very importance of thanksgiving in prayer. So you started, you went into his presence with thanksgiving. And the Bible says, continue in prayer with what? Thanksgiving. You know, that's how you can pray, 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 pray. And next you say, Lord, I thank you. I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you thanks. You know what? Because even in the place of prayer, this is very key. Even in the, in the place of prayer, your, with thanksgiving, your prayer is being answered. And when you even thank him for that which has been answered, you can now move to the next prayer. I don't know if you're understanding me. Before you jump from one prayer point to the other, give him thanks. Hallelujah. Do what? Give him thanks. You are interceding for somebody. You want God to heal somebody. After you finish it, before you move to another, give him thanks. It is done. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. For this you've done, Lord, I give you thanks. Because you jump prayer on top prayer. You jump prayer on top prayer. And the Bible says in James, you pray amiss because what? You pray to consume it in your own words. You see, the kind of prayer, brothers and sisters, that we really, really go for is a prayer born out of passion. Not out of compulsion. Hmm? Because I don't want it to be that uh, they, they will say, I'm not praying. I will pray. And you know you are dying at that place. You are, you are not connected at all. Everything distracts you. You are in your room, but somebody cooking in the kitchen is distracting you. You are praying, no? Everything distracts you and you say you are praying. But when the passion is there, you go into prayer, locking yourself, knowing that nothing distracts you. You just want to fellowship with the Father. How can somebody without fellowship come and make a decree? Pastor was saying one time, then back at home, and there was an exam, and they were not ready, and the brethren held hand, and they canceled the exam. Hallelujah. Which day will you be able to hold the hands of your group mate and cancel a mode you are not ready for? <laughs> Hallelujah. And there are believers in that group. You see, but it, over the time, I see that things have changed. We, I'm sorry to say, but I think now, in these days, we have so much of selfish people. It didn't sound well, I'm sorry, but that's how it is. In those days, that's how we take exam. If some people are not ready, we know how to work it out. You communicate to the teacher. You just want to pass a loan. This is not selfishness. And you may not understand, sometimes it's inconvenience for the people that are ready. Because next time you have to revise that thing again. No matter how sharp you are. But still you consider others. But now everybody on his own. Teacher comes in, are you ready today? The teacher have not even finished. Yes. And before class they told you that they are not ready. Class, are you ready for it? Yes. And others will just look at you. Oh. Where is this person from? And tomorrow you are, you, are, you, are, you are in a tight corner. You want them to help you out. You've not asked yourself, since you are in that class, you, are you, there's one time they gave you a task and you're asking somebody and nobody seems to know it. Who told you that they don't know it? 
It's because you are a tuno, so that's why they don't know it for you. You know it alone. Hallelujah. To so continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So I'm praying and I'm thanking him for what he has done already. Hallelujah. You see, another thing should, thanksgiving should be an all season lifestyle. First Thessalonians 5.18. It should be an what? All season lifestyle. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything. You see, in some things, are you with me here? In some things, in what? Say to neighbor, in everything. Give him thanks. You see why if the highest score, so to say, is five and you got three today, if you're not able to appreciate and thank him for that three, you think five will come tomorrow. In fact, you won't get two and you have the work. <laughs> you see, and, and some of you think, ah, they, I, I'm serving God and it's as if this is not working out. It's not that it's not working out, it's your selfishness. They just gave you three. You don't know if God is trying, just trying you. Let me see. All the time, it's, it's, you see the selfishness I'm talking about. When someone gets the highest mark, five, and what was your score? I got five. Right? And you won't take time to give him thanks. But when you get two and you have, you have reward, what, what, what was your score? Your the mind, they gave me two. They, you blame people, they, who are they? Who spoke for you? <laughs> Hallelujah. In every situation, you just give him thanks. This is, his, this is the will of God in Christ concerning everyone. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, 20. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unto God in all things. Hallelujah. In season and out of season. What to make a man of God going through tough time and see me still thanking God? Hallelujah. He's still thanking God. Because there's no room here for escape. He said, in all time, you should just give him thanks. You see, sometimes when you, thanksgiving can save you from trouble. Eh? Thanksgiving can do what? Save you from trouble. You see, just try this little thing. I'm not even talking about giving thanks to God now, but among your peers, just try this thing. That your arrogance, if you can just bring it down, and in class you learn how to appreciate people. You see how things will change in that group. Actually, nobody hates you. Let me tell you now, in case you don't know. In that group, if they hate you, nobody hates you. What is playing out is your selfish interest and lack of appreciation. The last time someone, you see, uh, let me be more open. I know some of you are very, very spiritual, but let me, let me still be more open. In those days, it used to happen. I know it still used to happen. Now, if I ask you, you will not answer me because you are very spiritual. But you know, there's a time a particular group will go for a model first. And they will have the answer. And they will give to the other group. Does it still happen now? Okay, I thought you were in the third heavens. I thought maybe I'm the only one on earth too. Okay. You see, and the last time they did the first move and they gave the other group. This is sacrifice, let me tell you. Because sometimes the first group end up not really passing it. Hallelujah. And they give it to the other group and when they give it to you, you think it was your right. Your father kept it there and they took it and gave it to you. 
And in the next mode, you expect them because they are fools to now give you again. And say they hate you. See, nobody hates you. It's your action. That's what I say, a lot of change. Then, when a particular group goes first to this department, and they, they do, even though they fumble, we we'll just sympathize with them. Sorry, but bring the, the person. <laughs> and, and, and my group there seems to be in between. It's as if we are not always first to any of those mundo. So when people have finished one even though there's no, there's no answer per se, but we already know what we're expecting. And we'll just do our homework. And we'll show. And later, simple appreciation. Just say, oh, thank you, your group did well, oh. Actually, what did they do? That kind of appreciation is annoying. What did they do? They failed, but they gave the information that they failed because this was what they were expecting, and this came out. But now everybody will lock up. In your heart, I failed now. Let them go and fail too. <laughs> Must everybody fail? Can somebody pay the price? <laughs> you see now, it's difficult for you. And Jesus gave himself for everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Why not just enter and do the feeling so that everybody will pass? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it's that reputation you are trying to build that is killing you. I don't know how to put this. You see, you are trying to maintain a clean sheet. But Jesus made himself of what? No reputation. Hallelujah. Amen. But you, you, you know you are building a reputation. When you come, everybody is trembling. Senior, senior, senior is here. He will enter and smash it. That's why, you see, some of us, now you only read to go and pass the exam. You don't even read to know what you... you because you don't have time to read to know. You have time to read to pass, to pass the exam. Because you know if you fail the exam, the whole course will know. Hallelujah. Amen. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. You will always come top in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, there is calmness with thanksgiving. Colossians 3.15. There is calmness with thanksgiving. When you will give him thanks, there is this calmness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also ye, ye accord in one body, and be ye thankful. There is this peace in you. Hallelujah. Amen. There is that peace. Because you know you're not owing anybody anything. Hallelujah. You have a lot in your mind. That's why every time you keep having migraine. A lot. Your head will be banging. Pa, 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 pa. Release me, release me, release me. It's banging. You store everything in your head. I say, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. Say in my heart, the peace of God will rule. He said to the wish also ye accord in one body and be ye thankful. Hallelujah. So there is calmness when you will know you are operating in the realm of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Luke now, Luke 17. Luke 17. Are you learning something? Luke 17. All right. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And when, and one of them, when he saw that he was hid, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Hallelujah. He did what? He glorified God. Remember that, first of all, it was in the place of prayer by voicing now that the Lord gave him instruction. You see, that's why you say it's always good to, start, good to start with thanksgiving because sometimes in the place of prayer, God gives you the next instruction. Hallelujah. You see, you're, you're, you might set out to pray for two hours, and what you want to pray is just to be speaking in tongues, right? And you can get to a time after 15, 20, 30 minutes, the Lord will say, sing or worship. Hallelujah. You just say worship. 
And when you worship him, he can give you another instruction again. And Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. And as we were going, and he found out that he was ill, he turned with a loud voice, 16. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan, 17. And Jesus answered and said, we are there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Ask your neighbor, where are the rest? In this month of December and beyond, not only this month, you know, we say once a team is given, don't take it for the month only. Just like, for example, now, last month was our month as what? <laughs> Have you resigned from your kingship? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you don't, you don't resign. You just move ahead. Say, so, because November I finish, I tender my resignation letter. No. In this December, as you're reigning, learn to give thanks. 18. There are not found that return to give glory to God to save this stranger. 19. And you see, one thing you should know about this emphasis, like I began to give the count earlier about the Samaritans. If you remember the story in Luke chapter 10, from verse 30, I think. You see, there was something that happened. Somebody was enjoying and was wounded, was robbed and wounded, and the priest came and passed. The Levite came and passed. And he said, and a Samaritan came and did what? Stopped and attended to the person. And he just asked a question. Among God, this one, who is this person's neighbor? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why I make this reference is to let you know something. Someone, you see, God works based on principle. They might not be the Jews per se, but they keep doing things that will win the heart of God. Jesus, every time, will be attracted to them because these people, there's one kind of mindset they have, and they keep getting my attention. Why would the rich keep getting richer? They attract the attention of money. And there are principles to money, right? Yes, sir. That's why you say, sometimes you're angry, and this person is not a believer, and this person is, 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 is worthy, say, a billionaire. Why would the person be a billionaire? Go and check billions the person is giving to orphanage. <laughs> Big for example, you know, you know how, how many billion of dollars every year to Africa? And you think God will stop blessing them? Or you think money will stop, stop coming? Money will be flowing. They lead to, and I enter, so this is how you fold it. You hold it very tight. You can't, you can't go anywhere. One day, <laughs> I said, brother, brother, was so sad. <laughs> brother, what, what happened? So... I lost my money. My money fell. How much is this money, brother? Let's not say the amount, but you know, you begin to wonder if this amount of money can make, can ruin your whole day and week like this. My God. Hallelujah. And the that came and attended to the angel. You see, there's no way you put yourself in a place where you offer help and not get help. Hmm? There's no way you put yourself, yeah, you will not get help. It's, it's impossible. Help will always come. I, began, I, I said earlier of... of, of Begate. If you notice now, it's that's why if you look most of the things, it's not that he's struggling to be anything or remain or remain first or remain second. Mm -mm. Doesn't struggle. The poor are, they are struggling, I put that are behind. They are struggling to come forward. But when you are there, you just allow yourself. You know, you know when you're already on air and 
you're not cruising, you know. Every year sends money to your countries, to our countries. The annoying part is that some of the money being sent for these aids, some of them don't see them. May God have mercy on that continent. Amen. 19. <clears throat> and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said what? Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So, thankful people are believing people. Huh? They are believing people. He said, he said, because he came to give thanks. You know what he said? He said, arise, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. No, I don't, I don't understand. So, because he gave thanks, it was even counted unto him as being mixing it up with faith. And he said, it is thy faith that has made you whole. So the question now I w- I'm expecting someone to be asking or think of is, so what really happened to this other nine? Have you ever thought of it at all? Yeah? What happened to this other nine? But this one that came say that faith has made you. You see, it's many times when you obey God, it's counted unto you as righteousness. The Bible says that Abraham obeyed God and it was counted unto him as what? Righteousness. So, one of the things to do in place of prayer while giving thanks is that it will aid. The thanks will serve as a catalyst to speeding up answers to your prayer. Hallelujah. When you give thanks, you say your faith has made you. It's, it's, it's made the answer come quickly. So, if you're going to a place of prayer, like we've seen in this place, as the moon goes on, we'll see some other example, kinds of thanksgiving and the rest of them. But one thing you need to know is that when you start with thanks, your doors are open for attention, like we saw in verse 13. You will receive an instruction like we saw in verse 14. Next thing you should do is to obey and you should learn how to return thanks like we saw in verse 15 of Luke 17. These four things I just listed now are very, very important. Hallelujah. When you come with thanks, you will receive an instruction. Next thing is for you to obey and the next is to return thanks also. Remember that whatever you start with and you get results, it's important to end with that as well. I don't know if it's, if it's clear. I remember uh, there's this um, song. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Hold on. So he started with what? Prayer. And ended with what? From today, do you know what you should learn how to do? Start with thanksgiving. And do what? End with thanksgiving. Let's be on our feet.